gotta keep trying. Good afternoon. Oh, that was good. Let's try it once again. Good afternoon. I've got a question for you. Who out there has a secret that you've never, ever told anyone? Let me see your hands. Twelve of you. Bullshit. <laughs> I don't believe it. Well, I've had a secret that I kept for 53 years. And so before I go on, I just want to tell you what it is. I am transitioning my gender. I've always wanted to be a boy. <laughs> I just wondered if you were listening or not. <laughs> now that I have your attention. Actually, I, I don't like to be called transgender because to me, transgender is, it's actually two words. It's transitioning and gender. And it's not what I am, and it's not who I am, but it's the process that I have to go through so that I can live female, so I can be myself. But I still go to parties and I still go to business events and someone will always introduce me like, oh, this is Joanna Ferrari and she's transgender. Like I'm a species from another freaking planet, right? I just want to go, nanu nanu, greetings earthling, <laughs> you know? But um, I don't really want to talk too much about transgender today. But what I do want to do is I want to build a bridge because a lot of times people think that who I am and what I'm going through is so far removed from your life and your world. So I'm going to do something that I don't really like to do. I don't really like to show my past pictures and who I was too much. But I do know this. If I show it to you, I don't want you to be looking at my story. I want you to see if you can see how you became you as we go through the story. And then I'll give you a few things that I've learned from going through this transition. Fair enough? Okay, great. So, this is me when I was very, very little, and it says dopey, right? Because we always end up dealing with labels. I mean, when I was born, the doctor said, you're male. My mom and dad said, you're John. So that's how they expected me to grow up. Well, my mom had the seven dwarfs over my bed. <laughs> Apparently, I got a hold of Dopey and ate him, so my mom decided to label me Dopey. But the thing is, everybody thinks that labels are bad, that they're wrong, but they're not. They're just not. There's so many different types of labels. And you know what the worst labels are? The ones that you put on yourself on the inside. And we learn to do that from a very young age. But have a look at this guy. Bright red hair right? And built like a Christmas tree. It looked like a freaking ornament on my head. And I got my butt kicked like every day. And when I didn't get my butt kicked, you know what I did? I went out and caused some mischief just so that I could keep wearing the label that people put on me. But that little guy got called gay. He got called sissy. He got called a girl. Little did they know. But he got called so many things, and the one thing that he got out of all of it was he became really fast at running. So, <laughs> but this was me at 14. By the age of seven, I already knew I was female inside. But as I said, it took me 53 years before I actually let my secret out. I'll be 57 um, in March. And so I've known for a very long time, and it was really hard to hide that. But every year at Halloween, from the time I was eight till the time I was 16, my mom would come and say, so are you going to dress again this year as a woman? And I say, fuck yes. Because <laughs> it was the only time that I got to truly be me, right? So... What I actually have gotten to do later in life was actually express who I really was. But because I couldn't express myself as who I really was, I thought that I would actually not be some boring male who did nothing with his life. So guess what? I went out and I took risks. I did some really crazy things. As a matter of fact, here's one of them. There we go. So this was me at 24 years old when I was a Chippendale dancer. <laughs> and I did that for nine years. And all I did was travel around the country um, doing acting, modeling, and stripping. 
And when I went to my psychologist before I could actually do my transition, I said, oh, yeah, I did a lot of really male things. She said, like what? I said, well, I was a stripper. She goes, what makes you think taking care of your body and dancing is male? And I went, oh, maybe. But by the time I was 27, I met this person. Her name was Alana. And Alana was the first time I experienced anyone that was transgender. And she was absolutely amazing. And when I heard her story, how she went from a 300-pound captain of a fishing boat to this, I went, oh, my God, that's me. And so for two years, I hung around with her, and I learned a whole lot about what I needed to do to transition. And at 29 years old, I was going to transition. But unfortunately, Alana went to New York. We live in Chicago. She went to New York, and five months after she left, she was murdered for being transgender because somebody didn't understand that she was just being happy, being herself. So I went and did something hyper again. I got into business this time, and I got married, which is actually more dangerous than transitioning. And this was my dad. My dad was my role model, and he was so proud of me. I was an international speaker. I was a twice-published author. Um, I still do interim CEO roles for companies where they bring me in, and I do uh, consulting to CEOs, and I take over the business until they get someone hired in. But my dad was so proud of his son. And when he found out about my transition, it crushed him. It really did. But he was amazing. And I used to stop into Vegas, which is where they lived, all the time, just to make sure I'd see him and, and let him know how proud of him I was as well. But this is what I ended up doing to myself. And I wonder if you can see yourself maybe in this picture. Because I wasn't being myself. I had so much success. Twice published author, traveling around the world, flying around in private jets, CEO of a business, just doing all the things that people would think are the things that make us the most happy. And I was absolutely so painfully sad that I started working out with weights. I figured if I did all of that, maybe what I could do is keep this woman who's been inside of me forever from coming out. And so that's what I did to myself. But the entire time, this was me inside. And I knew it. There was no real evidence of what I was going to be able to do with this. And it was the scariest thing that I'd ever considered doing. But I finally, finally, on April 13th, got my boy to make the biggest decision of his life and to let me out. I had to go and tell someone that I was married to for 23 years about my transition, and it crushed her. It crushed my kids. It crushed my parents. I lost my friends. I lost my businesses. I got to start on hormones, and six months after being on hormones, they were shutting down my adrenal glands. They were shutting down my liver. I was having blackouts. They told me that I needed to come off the hormones, and I got so depressed. I spent the first Christmas of my transition alone in my apartment with a knife. And I'm not proud of that, but I'm telling it to you because when you feel like there's no control in your life, when you are not happy, the only thing you feel like you have control over is whether or not you live or not. And that's where I was at. Luckily, I survived. <laughs> so this was me on April 13th, 2013. And it's been an incredible roller coaster of a ride, I can tell you that. Because I got to the point where I couldn't get work because people didn't want to understand who I was. I got to 79 cents in the bank account. It seems like pretty awful stuff. But I'll share with you some of the lessons that I got that have made this so absolutely powerful. Here's the one thing I will share with you. When you start to believe in yourself 
and you want to let out who you really are, you only need one more person. That's it. One more person to believe in you. And between the two of you, you get so strong because you just know there's at least one person who has your back. My youngest son, Alex, has been that person. And he is absolutely amazing. He's been there through the whole thing with me. Thank you. Yes. So I wanted to learn more about what it was like to be a woman. So what I did was I went and found the vagina monologues. And, he, and I was like horrified as to what it was all about. But I got some of the most amazing lessons of my life. Myself and nine other women going through and doing those monologues. It was really incredible. And it was a really big turning point for me in my life. And this was me last year, or at the beginning of this year, um, after I've lost 18 and a half kilos from doing CrossFit. <laughs> so it's been kind of a wild journey. And I just want to give you five things that I've actually gotten from it that you can actually take and apply to your life. Number one, I realized that John wasn't keeping me in, that I was actually keeping him around me because I was afraid of letting my authentic self out. And I think a lot of people do that. And we blame the outside world or we blame something for it. And there was nothing to blame. It was me still needing to hide before I could actually let myself out. Second one is, if you're changing something in your life, don't do it superficially. Don't set a goal, change your attitude, and take a couple actions. That's what I call play school psychology. If you want to change something in your life and you really want to change it, what you need to do is you need to dig in deep. You need to find out what your fears are, what your disappointments are, what are the illusions that you're letting yourself live, what are the lies you're telling yourself. When you get rid of those type of things, you can actually have whatever you want. And they actually, this is what helps you to build the shield of resilience that lets you get to the two things that every human being wants. One is love and the other is happiness. That's it. Everything else is superfluous when, it, when you've got those two. Here's the third one. You've got to learn to have some patience with yourself because not many people love themselves well. Not many people trust themselves. Not many people accept themselves for who they know they really are inside. And the reason we do that is because we're so afraid of what our world is going to say if we actually act out and become who we really and truly are. And do you go through some pain? You sure the hell do. You don't get away from that. But it is so worth it because you get to live your truth. I think that this one is really important. I don't think most people understand that there is your world and then there's the world. And when you start working on your world, which is the choices that you make, the way that you relate to things, and the experiences that you have, when you work on those, your world starts to reflect back to you that you're doing a great job. And I think that that's been the most powerful way for me to understand that the world has accepted me as being female is that all of my friends and all of the people that I work with have actually changed from what initially was happening when I was transgender. I'll give you an example. A guy came up to me <laughs> in a bar one night and said, are you one of those tranny things? And I said, What's your definition of tranny? He said, you know, you like to put on dresses and have sex with men. And I said, don't be ridiculous. We take the dresses off. <laughs> he had nothing to say. <laughs> I don't know. But now I'm working again with CEOs, helping them to learn about communication. I'm actually helping them to overcome personal challenges. I work with many major corporations, and I enjoy my world. I actually got, my ex-wife has come back around, and Sunday I finally got to see my daughter after two and a half years. It was amazing. Yeah. Here you go. This is my last one for you. 
you have to remove the labels that other people put on you. Some people put labels on right in front of you. Some people put them on in back of you, you know. And none of those feel good. But we don't realize that just like a tree can't grow unless it actually grows deep roots, labels can't grow within you unless you take ownership of them and you keep repeating them to yourself or you let other people hang those labels on you. So I want to share with you something that really made the difference for me. Because what I know about every single person in this room is you've all gone through conflict at one point or time. And I also know that every single one of you has endured a transition. It might not be a gender transition, but you've endured a transition. But what makes it easier? What makes the world turn completely beautiful is when you learn to say one thing to yourself not because of anything that you do, just because you can look in the mirror and you can honestly say, I am enough. That's it. <laughs> when you can say this and look in the mirror and look yourself in the eye, I can guarantee you, it won't be long before your world is starting to actually give you the things that you really want and accepting you for who you really are. It's the most incredible experience you'll ever have. I just want to say thank you so much for letting me play with you today, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you.